everybody, welcome to Stunks Music. My name is Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at Corpus in this deep dive episode. Let's go! So here we are back in the Ableton Manual, and today we're looking at Corpus, so let's jump in. Corpus is an effect that simulates the acoustic characteristics of seven types of resonant objects. Developed in collaboration with applied acoustic systems, Corpus uses physical modelling technologies to provide a wide range of parameters and modulation options. The frequency and or decay rate of the resonance can be MIDI modulated by enabling the frequency and or decay switches in the sidechain section. Toggle the down arrow button in Corpus's title bar to access the sidechain parameters. The MIDI from choosers allows you to select the MIDI track and tapping point from which to receive MIDI notes information. With frequency enabled, the tuning of the resonance is determined by the incoming MIDI note. If multiple notes are held simultaneously, the last and low switch determines whether the last or the lowest note will have priority. The transpose and fine knobs allow for coarse and fine offset of the MIDI modulated tuning. With frequency disabled, the tune control adjusts the bass frequency of the resonance in hertz. The corresponding MIDI note number and a fine tune offset in sense is displayed below. Enabling off decay causes MIDI note off messages to mute the resonance. The slider below the switch determines the extent to which MIDI note off messages mute the resonance. At 0%, note offs are ignored and the decay time is based only on the value of the decay parameter, which is located under the resonance type selector. This is similar to how real-world mallet instruments such as marimbas and glockenspiels behave. At 100%, the resonance is muted immediately at note off, regardless of the decay time. You can hide or show the sidechain parameters by toggling the down arrow button in Corpus's title bar. This button will light up if the sidechain is active. Corpus contains a low frequency oscillator to modulate the resonant frequency. The amount control sets how much the LFO affects the frequency. The rate control specifies the LFO speed. It can be set in terms of hertz or sync to the song tempo, allowing for controlled rhythmic modulation. Available LFO waveform shapes are sine, creates a smooth modulation with rounded peaks and valleys, square, triangle, sawtooth up, sawtooth down, and two types of noise, stepped and smooth. Although only one set of LFO controls is visible, there are actually two LFOs, one for each stereo channel. The phase and spin controls define the relationship between these two LFOs. Phase, available only when the LFO are synced to song tempo, keep both LFOs at the same frequency, but can set the two LFO waveforms out of phase with each other, creating stereo movement. Set to 180, the LFO outputs are 180 degrees apart, so that when one LFO reaches its peak, the other is at its minimum. With phase set to 360 or zero, the two LFOs will run in sync. Spin, only available when the LFOs are in Hertz mode, detunes the two LFO speeds relative to each other. Each stereo channel is modulated at a different frequency as determined by the spin amount. For the noise waveforms, the phase and spin controls are not relevant and do not affect the sound. Spread detunes the two resonators in relation to each other. Positive values raise the pitch to the left resonator while lowering the pitch to the right one, while negative values do the opposite. At 0%, the resonators are tuned the same. The resonance type chooser allows you to select from seven types of physically modeled resonant objects. Beam simulates the resonant properties of beams from different materials and sizes. Marimba, a specialized variant of the beam model, reproduces the characteristic tuning of marimba bar overtones, which are produced as a result of the deep arch cuts of the bars. String simulates the sound produced by strings of different materials and sizes. Membrane is a model of a rectangular membrane, such as a drum head, with a variable size and construction. Plate simulates sound produced by a rectangular plate, a flat surface of different materials and sizes. 
Pipe simulates a cylindrical tube that is fully open at one end and has a variable opening at the other, adjusted with the opening parameter. Tube simulates a cylindrical tube that is fully open at both ends. The resonator quality chooser controls the trade-off between the sound quality of the resonators and performance by reducing the number of overtones that are calculated. Basic uses minimal CPU resources, while full creates more sophisticated resonances. This parameter is not used with the pipe or tube resonators. The decay knob adjusts the amount of internal dampening in the resonator and thus the decay time. The material knob adjusts the variation of the damping at different frequencies. At low values, low frequency components decay slower than high frequency components, which simulates objects made of wood, nylon or rubber. At higher values, high frequency components decay slower which simulates objects made of glass or metal. This parameter is not used with the pipe or tube resonators. The radius parameter is only available for the pipe and tube resonators. Radius adjusts the radius of the pipe or tube. As the radius increases, the decay time and high frequency sustain both increase. At very large sizes, the fundamental pitch of the resonator also changes. The decay and material radius parameters can also be controlled with the XY controller. Ratio is only available for the membrane and plate resonators, and adjusts the ratio of the object's size along its X and Y axes. The brightness control adjusts the amplitude of various frequency components. At higher values, higher frequencies are louder. This parameter is not used with the pipe or tube resonators. In harmonics, adjust the pitch of the resonator's harmonics. At negative values, frequencies are compressed, increasing the amount of lower partials. At positive values, frequencies are stretched, increasing the amount of upper partials. This parameter is not used with the pipe or tube resonators. Opening, which is only available for the pipe resonator, scales between an open and closed pipe. At 0%, the pipe is fully closed at one side, while at 100% the pipe is open at both ends. The hit knob adjusts the location of the resonator at which the object is struck or otherwise activated. At 0% the object is hit at its centre. Higher values move the activation point closer to its edge. This parameter is not used with the pipe or tube resonators. The process signal is fed through a low pass and high pass filter, which can be controlled with an XY controller. To define the filter bandwidth, Click and drag on the vertical axis. To set the position of the frequency band, click and drag along the horizontal axis. The filter can be toggled on or off with the filter switch. Width adjusts the stereo mix between the left and right resonators. At 0%, both resonators are fed equally to each side, resulting in mono output. At 100%, each resonator is sent exclusively to one channel. Bleed mixes a portion of the unprocessed signal with the resonated signal. At higher values, more of the original signal is applied. This is useful for restoring high frequencies, which can often be damped when the tuning or quality are set to low values. This parameter is unavailable with the pipe or tube resonators. Gain boosts or attenuates the level of the processed signal, while the dry-wet control adjusts the balance between the dry input signal and the signal sent to Corpus's processing. Turning the dry wet down will not cut resonances that are currently sounding, but rather stop new input signals from being processed. Corpus contains a built-in limiter that automatically activates when the audio level is too high. This is indicated by the LED in the upper right corner of Corpus's display. So it's another long section in the manual today, but this one's not too complicated. Essentially, we're just changing the resonance of the object we're putting our sound through. So let's jump into Ableton and have a little look what we can do. So here we are back in Ableton. Let's have a look at Corpus. So there's two main things that I use Corpus for. One of them is creating mad synths out of very simple oscillators. So we just got a sign here. We could just use a saw, triangle. We'll have a look at a few different ones. But without using any of the FM, we're just gonna straight up use one simple waveform. The other way is what I use to tune and really beef up my um, my drums. So let's have a listen first of all. We have snare session dry, and I think this is just one of the inbuilt Ableton kits. Let's have a little listen to the snare drum. So it's a nice recorded snare drum. Let's turn corpus on, and we're going to set it to membrane. I'm going to set it from medium to full mode. So if you remember in the manual, membrane is uh, compared to a tom 
It is a the, the membrane like the skin of a drum. So now we're going to be putting our snare drum through another drum. So let's just listen to it as it comes. You can hear a big resonance there. That's not quite what we're looking for. But what this will allow us to do is tune our snare drum. So I don't know how many of you guys do this. I am, every single track, I always do this. My kick drum is tuned to the, the root note of the song and my snare drum is usually tuned to a fifth. So it gives this kind of nice boom, ka, boom, ka, and it's actually musical and it helps kind of lock in. And when you've got all these other crazy sound design things going on, for me, I find it really nice when there's no conflict um, between those, those frequencies. So let's go to our tuning here. And you can see when you move this, it changes down here what's going on. So for me, I do a lot of songs in G or F sharp. So if we go to G, then we want a fifth up. So if we grab our MIDI, let me just show you uh, the lazy way I do this. If G is our root note, you go down five semitones, that's a fifth. You could go up seven, so go one, two, three, four, five. So D would be a fifth up from G. So back to our corpus here. If my root note is G, we're gonna to wanna to make this to say D. Let's have a little look. C, D, there we go. So let's have a listen now. Now that decay and the resonance of that is a bit too much still. So we're gonna have a mess with the X, Y here. We can either do it on our decay and material or with the X, Y. So I just like to move this around and see what we can get. So we can hear we don't want the decay to be all the way over here. That's too much. That's sounding quite poppy. Let's turn corpus off and on. And that's got that kind of nice big boom. So that's at D4. So we could take that down to D3, see if that sounds nicer. I'm just pressing down on my keyboard. It's quite nice, it's got a much lower kind of thunk to it. Let's take it down to D2. All the way down here. Now I can hear a big lot of low end on there. I'm gonna grab span and let's have a look at what's actually going on. Okay. So let's hear it off. On. See that big boost around that 200 section. It's just freaking out some of those frequencies around. So I'd say that D2 is too low. I quite like D3. Let's go back up here. Turn it off. So I think we've got quite a nice resonance there. Now we can change this listening LR. And in our case now, it's like, where are you gonna be miking that, um, that snare drum? Is the mic gonna be banging in the middle? Are you gonna pull it to the side? So let's have a listen. And I can tell a big difference between here zero and when it's up at 50, 60, all the way to the 100. And you can see here in our correlation meter, whether it's smack in the middle, mono, all the way to the right, or whether it starts having a bit of this, uh, bit of this movement in it. So I'd be tempted to leave it somewhere 34, 30, 43, and then put a utility on it afterwards and mono my bass from 500 down. Maybe mono from 200 down. From 300. So you can see that, that the correlation meter now is kind of starting mono and going out to the sides. as the sound spreads. So again, let's hear it without corpus. Quite a standard snare drum. And we start getting some of that beef back into it. But that's not the only way you could use corpus. That might be the first iteration of it. 
we can chuck another one in afterwards now and try and get something a little more crazy going on. So if we go down to pipe tube, one of these ones, let's do pipe so we have our opening. And we'll turn the opening down to start off with. I'm going to make sure that this tune is on our D again. Let's do the higher one because there's some nice resonant frequencies up there. So we've got D2 originally and D3 here. So let's listen now. That's got some crazy spiky nuts going on. So let's have a quick look before or after. And that's obviously too much. We don't really want that kind of in insanity going. So we can bring our dry wet down, 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 down. So it's only a little bit happening. And even at 1%, it's just adding a bit more of that in. That's a quick look before and after. It's very subtle, but it's just adding some of these higher, higher frequencies in, and they're going to be at the frequency that we want. So that's going to help that snare drum kind of kick through at the D note that we want it to be. Um, we could also, you know, take this right down again. Let's see what it's like down at D2. Turn this up. And take it down to D1. You start getting kind of that granulized, stretchy sound. So this could be really nice as an effect if we were to uh, automate the radius. We could grab Max for Live, we could grab a, uh, an LFO or a Shaper on here, and start doing some crazy stuff. Let's give that a second to load. All right, map radius. When you start getting this real fast, it's creating all those crazy kind of low frequencies. And if we were to put our LFO on too, we could now start going a bit mad with it, really. Still on medium, let's chuck it to full. And our opening here is going to make a big difference. So that's less useful, but can be fun if you want to kind of stretch this stuff out. So let's just uh, turn these two off again. Let's just go back to our original here. Good bit of beef added to that. Um, so this can work with kick drums as well. Let me just add a, I want to find a weak kick drum or a, a non-process kick drum. So let's just have a look. I type in kick, um, kick dry should give us the same thing. It's a hard hit. Okay, so we've got our kick dry. Let's have a listen again. It's a, a well-recorded, decent dry kick. Corpus. So in this instance, we're doing the same thing. Let's go to membrane, let's change it to full mode. And if our snare drum was in D, I can rename this quickly and just go snare D. And then when we process it, it'll be named the right thing. And we can call this kick G. So we want to take this tune down to G. We'll start at G2 and see what we got. I still think that resonance is too high. We want a big boomer, right? So let's go down to G1. Down here. And let's see if we can G0 it. What we got. And let's grab our span again. Control C, Control V. Open you up. So let's have a listen B4 and have a look. So there's a nice bit of low end content there already. Bit of our click. Let's turn it on. Look at all that. 
Now, obviously, the decay time and everything's a bit too much on this, but that's a really nice addition of all these low-end frequencies. So let's have a look at our decay time and our material and move this around, see what we can get. Now, with drums, we don't want these big decay times over here. But maybe if you were trying to make an explosion sound effect or something, this would be a good way to do it. But I'm going to be looking for quite a tight sound over here with the decay, so... If you wanted to get really in depth with this, you could do some maths to do with your BPM and the decay time. Now, I can't actually remember what the maths is, <laughs> but we can have a look up. Hold on, I'll be right back. So I found this website, studioslave.com, and you can input your BPM and it will give you the reverb size, pre-delay, reverb decay times, and total reverb beat divisions. So you've got one bar, half note, quarter note, and your decay times here. So for 172 BPM, which is what I put in, that's kind of one of my one of my main tempos I like to do. Even if I'm doing half time stuff, I'll still do it at 172. Um, we can give us a thing, so a quarter note, or maybe we'd want an eighth note, so we can go reverb decay time 343.39, and we could half that again if we wanted to get an eighth note. So let's go to the calculator. 343.39 divided by 2, 171. So that would now give us a decay time, which is going to be a note length. So what was this? 171.6. So let's go 0.171 to get 171 milliseconds. So that's now giving us a decay time of a quarter note. So if we turn it off, let's listen to it before quite a, a dry kick drum as it, as it's the name suggests and corpus on set to our G root note with the decay time that matches our tempo you've now got a lot of that boom in there um, and that's going to help you a lot if if you're making your own sounds using found sounds I mean I know a lot of you guys probably get your 808s and stuff like that to create your drums I kind of really like to manipulate organic sounds and pull sounds out from from organic stuff rather than straight away going for the electronics. So I still, I might end up cutting this out with a, an EQ or an auto filter and then layering it with an 808. That's something that I could still do. But having these frequencies here to cut out, for me, I find that always helps a lot. So let's say, take this to 200, or 100. Still the before and after. Changing the sound, we lose a lot. Obviously, what we what we're adding is that low down. Let me delete. So let's duplicate this, and say we want to add some higher frequencies to it too. So let's go up to G one. That's G two there. So let's go up to G two. G two. And that's not 200, so we probably don't want that. That's going to be interfering with our snare. So let's go back down to G1. And that's right on our 100. That's where you want your kick drum to be. Obviously, this sounds like quite a, a muddy mess at the moment. You need to, again, adjust our dry wets. And let's see what we can get with our, our inharmonics and our brightness. Adds a bit more air to it, and let's see what the brightness. Again, maybe having that up is quite nice. Spread. We'll leave in the middle. So this is not a finished kit drum, but it's a good start that we could then reprocess. So let me uh, resample mode. Arm. So we can see the difference here between our original and the process version. It's got a nice longer bit of uh, of boom at the front. So to turn this into something usable, I would probably then go ahead and use the drum bus and mess around with our transients a bit, give it more transient. And 
frequency here we can uh, again if you wanted to adjust it properly see down here G. So we've gone from to now that sounds a bit over compressed and boomy, but um, I'm just trying to make the point obvious of what we're doing here. So by resonating it through another membrane, you're kind of taking your kick drum and playing it through another kick drum and using multiple versions of corpus you can slowly add your lower resonant frequencies your higher resonant frequencies and again if you wanted to duplicate this and go well it's too boomy we want some real high stuff let's take this right up to somewhere up the top here g4 let's see what we've got up here so that's what we're adding this higher up and maybe you want our decay time to be longer in those higher frequencies so we can uh, something like that being added so with and without these don't have to be massively affecting it can all be quite subtle we can bring the dry wet down on the original one too here so you're just shaping the sound to something a bit more uh, tuned and a bit more processed and then we can go ahead you can do your EQs you can do whatever it is you like to do with kick drums um, yeah corpus is a great one that I use just to help tune my drums and give them a bit more smack um, that's like the subtle use of them keeping it down this side with the small decay times when you start ramming it up the other way you can get some real crazy stuff so that's what we're gonna have a look at next with operator so I will start with sine waves quite nice but let's start with a a square wave just because we've got a bit more uh, distortion and rasp in that I'm grab my MIDI note and for me personally a lot of what I do one long note a lot of what I do is resampling and reprocessing so I tend not to work in MIDI too much so have a listen to this um, initial sound you can hear it's kind of a subby noise put corpus on straight away it sounds like a bell it sounds like something being hit so we want to go from beam we're going to go down to tube and the first thing we want to sort out is this side chain so we want to go side chain from operator frequency do we want it to be the last or the lowest we'll press the lowest although i'm probably not going to be doing chords um, generally if you're playing first inversion chords your lowest would be your root note and then pitch bend range um, i'll set that to 12 if I am going to do pitch bend, I usually dive a whole octave or go up a whole octave. And the off decay we will mess around with in a minute. At the moment, I'm just going to resample one long note. So let's have a listen to what we've got now. Before, after. So again, I can hear that long decay time I don't really like. So I'm going to be working here to try and get something I do like. adding a low that a lot of that low end boomy stuff so let's go transpose gonna hit it up an octave you can hear that transient that's kind of been added let's add some MIDI changing right quick bass line Here the decay isn't quite ending at the right time. This is where the off decay comes in handy. So off decay, put it to 100%. It should stop as soon as the MIDI note stops. That sounds a little too aggressive, so we'll bring it down as a small tap. And we hit the transpose up 24. Let's hit it up to 36, three octaves. 48. You just hear kind of a little plonk there, so I kind of like 24 was quite nice. So by 
automating this decay, you can kind of get it opening up over time, if you can hear that. And you can see down here that it's following our MIDI, so if we just watch it here. notes changing so we're transposing all of that up two octaves and it's going to be following along with the note so we could fine tune it a bit if you want it to be slightly detuned for instance I'll leave that in the middle for now and then we've got our spread down here which uh, really obvious on the headphones you can hear it spreading and pulling it around there so that's with the square wave, it kind of does its thing. The triangle wave is one of the ones that gives you a quite an obvious um, difference. And let's change from tube, actually. Let me do what I normally do and duplicate this. Loop over here. So we'll change from square to triangle, which is quite nice. And we'll change from tube to pipe. And let's see what we've got here. even lower that's a bit too low so 24 seems to be the maximum we can push it with this particular sound we could also hit these guys up an octave shift up and then we should be able to push this one down another octave let's see what we got up an octave that was quite nice so this is giving a lot of that kind of low end it's giving a bit of distortion it's kind of giving some crackly grainy stuff when the opening's down here so from a triangle wave which would have sounded like this Like I said, I like to do a lot of reprocessing and resampling, so that does sound a bit messy, but from there I'd take that as what I'd call a full spectrum sound, and you could start working from there. So we could... Uh... Something like that on it, if we take it to SMP, give it a bit of drive, a bit of resonance, and we could put uh, an LFO on here. Set it to rate. Let's go um, eighth notes. Where are we? D, 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 quarter eighth and the amount up. So if you could build something kind of a bit bigger like this, then you could go in and start doing some FM and building up your um, bass frequency. And all of these things you're adding are going to be exponentially changed from here on out. So let's start adding a bit of this sine wave in and see what we get.
filter, we have Corpus On. Auto filter. And it doesn't have to end there. We can add another corpus after this and be putting all of that again through another membrane. So we'll turn the LFO, uh, not the LFO, sorry, we'll open up the sidechain mode, have that coming from operator five, this one as well, we'll set to couple operator five. So it's taking its own MIDI again, so it will be following. Frequency lowest, uh, pitch bend to 12 plus 12, and the off decay, we will keep it probably where it was, let's say 80%. And before it was going through a pipe, let's see what we can do this time. Should we go through a membrane, a plate? Let's see what a plate does. Um, put that up to full just for your main, you know, get more frequencies. sound just from that little bit of FM and let me just go here and all of that movement created from the auto filter afterwards still personally what I would do with this kind of sound is um, just take one note and octave down G1 is what we want. And uh, Alt T, boom, resample, record, and sample this one out. You can see that that continued after the MIDI note because we have our decay set. So let me just rename this as G1 uh, Wub Rezo. It has a bit of resonance to it. And from there, I'd then um, take that into Control Shift D. Uh, MIDI effect, instruments, sampler, and drag this into here, set our note to G1, there we go, and then from here you can keep your reprocess. some more FM after that so let's uh, change this to a triangle for some screechy stuff <laughs> come to the sample we want it to play forwards then backwards <laughs> Just after this, why another corpus, of course. So this can just keep being reprocessed and reprocessed and reprocessed and adding more of these harmonic frequencies in. We can open our sidechain again and go from this time seven, because that's where we are. And this time, let's try a membrane. So what we were doing with the drums. And we can bring this down here. <laughs> Now you can use this tune as a way of tuning the resonance. So if you kind of want that, there's these kind of dubstep noises that aren't necessarily wob wob wob, but they kind of go brown. You can kind of use this to kind of get that. Um, and we could do that for Max for Live. We could try using the LFO here on it. Uh, 
personally, I always like using the max LFO because you can set exactly what it is you want to do. So let's go map to our tune. And we don't want it to go that high. We can bring this down to like there. And... <laughs> Off decay frequency, turn those back on. So we want to go low, set this to 12, even though I'm not using it at the moment, just for when we do. And off decay set at 100. And oh, so I'll transpose. depending on what you want to do. In my case, I would probably just resample this again. Take our G0, stretch it right out, and we just freeze flatten, but I will uh, resample it just for continuity. Record. And now we've got this nice, rename that G1 um, resonant wobbler I don't really know and from here again same thing what you want to do we could resample it we could take it into a wavetable you could you know let's just MIDI instrument come down to wavetable I'm gonna have to save this quick so now if I get the wavetable and drop this in here we have <laughs> It's just for me, it's about reprocessing, 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 adding resonance, you know, just trying to get noises out of whatever you can. All right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive on Corpus. As always, project files are in the description. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll catch up with you guys next time. See you later.